No one who has been paying attention to the growth of radical Islam in Britain should have been surprised that the terrorist who stood over murdered American journalist James Foley was reported to have a London accent. Over a thousand British Muslims are now fighting for the Islamic State, and more are joining every day. The key thing to realize about British fighters in Syria is that they're not there to take a backseat role. They are very much at the forefront of this conflict. Britain is now a major exporter of terrorists, the result of multiculturalism. There have been warning signs for years. This was a Muslim protest in London CBN News brought to viewers more than eight years ago. Today, Britain has functioning Sharia courts, and Sharia patrols enforce Islamic law on some of its streets. Remove yourself away from the mosque. Go away from the mosque now. Muslim patrol. This is a Muslim area, and you're not wanted around here. Islamic halal food is everywhere, and Islam is today the fastest growing religion in the UK. I actually gave up a modeling career for Islam, and I am happy. That's the best choice I've made ever. <laughs> Even though Muslims are a relatively small minority in Britain, there is a feeling among some British that their nation is being handed over to Islam, that the government doesn't care about promoting traditional British values, Judeo-Christian values, either because it doesn't believe in them anymore or because it doesn't want to be labeled as intolerant. British civilization has been a gift to the world. But the British don't care so much about their own civilization anymore, and it's into this vacuum that Islam is advancing. Sure, the British still care about their queen and tradition, but radical Muslims have been allowed and even encouraged to build a parallel society within this officially Christian nation. The reason we have capitulated in the West so much to Islam is self-hatred. There's an underlying self-hatred of our own societies, of our own cultures. Anne-Marie Waters is a former leftist who runs Sharia Watch UK. We've got this multiculturalism, this dangerous multiculturalism in Britain, which is killing women, killing girls. And the left not only doesn't say anything about it, but continues to push for it as a good, even though it knows, even though it can see that it's killing girls. We know for a fact that there are mosques in this country where little girls of eight, nine, ten years of age are being married, uh, quote unquote married, to older men and, and being raped. When British soldier Lee Rigby was decapitated in the streets of London, one of the first things Prime Minister David Cameron said was that the murder was not because of Islam. After the Foley decapitation, Cameron said it again. We come back to this, it's only a tiny minority of extremists, it's got nothing to do with Islam, but the point is, this stuff is coming directly from the Quran, from the Hadith. Muslim immigrant sex grooming gangs were covered up by the British police for 20 years. The British government's weak response to radical Islam has led to the formation of citizen groups and protest movements, like the English Defence League and Britain First. Britain first goes into the street to confront Sharia patrols and has horrified the British establishment for having the nerve to go into mosque to pass because out Bibles to Muslims. And now, there's a nice British Army Bible. Spread the word of Jesus Christ around Bradford. Okay. Amen. Jesus Christ our Lord, we want to save you from hell. We will reject the false prophet Muhammad okay. and read the Bible. The chairman of Britain First is Paul Golding. This is a Christian country. Our heritage is Christian. Uh, we take it very seriously. We hold it dear. Um, so giving out Christian Bibles in a Christian country on British streets to people who are British citizens, we don't see anything wrong with that. Is there, have you looked around for any threats at all? But when we were with Golding, he was dodging the police, who seemed to view him as a troublemaker. The British government is going to have to decide whether it cares more about being viewed as tolerant or about stopping terrorism, because the whole world is now paying the bill for Britain's experiment in multiculturalism. Um, and we have got to start dealing with this. We've got to say, look, we have freedom of speech. You can't beat up women. We won't stone people to death for their sex lives. You have to accept that or you can't live here. Dale Hurd, CBN News, London.